Hello and welcome back to Jacanic. It's the middle of the week. What am I doing making a video? I don't know. I just got off work, but I felt this was way too important to not share with everyone. I'm seeing this a lot, not just with chainsaws. I'm seeing it with backpack blowers, handheld blowers, trimmers. Back in the past, no one had an issue changing out their plug. It was real simple. The plug boot came right off their plug. They changed the plug out, put it back on. They were ready to rock. Now, I don't know why they're doing it, but it seems like the little coil wire that's connected to the end of your ignition uh, wire is tighter whenever it goes onto the spark plug. I guess it was because they were too loose or something, but I, there was no issues with them, but they've made them noticeably tighter on the spark plugs. Not only this, they've made the boots larger. I'm sure they did this for shocking hazards when people would put their elbow down on the back of their trimmer on top of their plug. It would shock them, but... Um, what I am seeing now is when customers go to change out their spark plug, they go to get the boot off and they try so hard to wrench it off with their fingers, they rip the whole boot off with the little wire that connects to the spark plug and they don't know how to put it back on. They try to just put it back on the wire. It doesn't work that way. They try to snip the end of their coil wire, which this customer did, and we're fixing to show you how it made them go from doing a little $5 repair to a $120 repair. So hopefully after watching this video, you'll know just how to fix it all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. For this demonstration, we're gonna be using a steel MS311 chainsaw. Some of the stuff that you might need for this project is some needle nose pliers. I'm going to have to change out his coil. The part number for the coil is a 1140-400-1303. I highly recommend getting OEM equipment when it comes to replacing coils. Believe me, I've tried aftermarket ones. It's a 50-50 shot. If you wanna to try to do the repair again, you can chance it, but it is quite likely that you will get a bad coil if you get an aftermarket always go OEM with coils. Um, you will be needing a business card to set your coil gap and a T27 um, torque to take out your screws. First thing I'm going to do is remove the top cover so we can get to the spark plug and the ignition wire. Once we have the cover off, you can see where the spark plug and the boot and wire are. Um, now this customer came in, he knew he messed up. He went to go take his plug boot off and ripped it off. And then a lot of people assume that this has to be stripped out to actually put it back inside and it worked. But if you strip it out, what happens is once you've put it all back together, it doesn't matter. They make these wires to the perfect length to where they won't ride in any area where it's gonna get too hot, uh, um, you know, next to the cylinder or something like that. So it's the perfect length to get to your spark plug. So if you trim any of this wire, there's no way to add to it to fix it. You have to replace the entire ignition module. So today we're gonna to go over how to replace the plug boot back onto your ignition module if you haven't gone this far. And since this guy did this, we might as well change out the ignition module and show you how to do that too. So first things first, we have to remove the four screws on the rewind housing so we can get to the ignition module. Unfortunately, I did not bring my impact home, so I am using my chainsaw tool. So this might take a little bit. Now we can see our ignition module. It has two more T27 screws holding it to uh, the case. Once we get to this point, I go ahead and remove the uh, spade to my kill wire. We take our screws out. Do not lose your washer on your screws. And we can take the coil off. 
To put your new coil on, the one for the Steel MS311 actually comes with the plug boot already attached, so that's super awesome. One step you don't have to do. Um, you are going to have to bend this a little bit into this track to make it all fit as you're putting it in, but you're going to want to put the, the bottom screw in first and get it in its little track and behind this plastic base. Make sure that your kill wires are kill wires are accessible so you can still get to them and you're going to put this down about where it's going to go. We're going to go ahead and start this one screw just a little bit. Now we're going to put our other screw in. Now when you put this screw in, the kill wire mounts to this part of the ignition module. So you're going to put that through there just like that, and then we're going to screw it into this top part. And we're gonna tighten it down, but we're still gonna leave it loose to where we can adjust it. So it's, it's on there, it's in place, but we're not wrenching it down yet, okay? All right, once we got it still loose to where it can move forward, forward and backwards, now we're gonna set our 10 thousandths gap between our flywheel and our ignition module. So you're gonna get a business card and you're gonna stick it in between and you're gonna turn the flywheel until the magnets on the flywheel line up with the ignition module and it will suction cup to the flywheel. Now we can tighten it down. Now we're going to put our spade back on here. Just like that. We can remove our uh, business card, spin the flywheel. You make sure that you've got plenty of clearance. That's good. We're going to put the coil wire back in its slot and voila, it reaches again. So let's put it back together and see if it's got fire. Not sure if you all will be able to see this, but... We do have fire. So we know we have fire now, but is it going to run? Why was the customer changing their plug out in the first place? That's what we find a lot when customers bring their uh, machine in with the plug boot off or needing the coil because they've destroyed the wire. It's because there was an initial problem that they thought the spark plug would fix and most of the time it isn't the issue. So uh, hopefully this doesn't have a problem and it just starts right up. Let's check it out and see. So it didn't start. So the next thing I'm going to do, even though the customer told me do not remove their fuel because it is expensive, um, we're going to dump it and see what's inside. Well, there's no water in it. I'm going to put my own gas in it and see if it makes any difference. All right, so I put my gas in there and I pulled it like 10 times and it's finally starting to pop off with my gas. But let's see how many times I've got to pull it before it actually takes off. 
some bad batches of gas, even can gas. I'm seeing it all the time. People say, oh, it's been running on it for months. I don't know what to tell you. I'm seeing it a lot with the true fuel, um, but this didn't look like true fuel. This looked like another brand that I'm not going to mention, but sometimes you get bad batches. Let's see if it's gonna start. opening the throttle with my foot because this is how I start them. Just wanting to take off finally. Almost there. So once again, sometimes the simplest explanation is the solution. If your saw, trimmer, blower, anything's running good, you try a different gas or try a different batch of gas and all of a sudden it doesn't run right, change your gas first. All right, now that we've got that one knocked out of the way and I can give it back to the customer tomorrow, um, I need to show you how to put a plug boot back on a coil wire before you whittle it away to this. I don't know if you can see that. Don't ever cut on your coil wire, okay? So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just get your boot back on and get you going. All right, it's getting a little dark, so I gotta add some light here. So first of all, on this bad coil, I went ahead and just cut it off flush so you could see you know, what it looks like whenever it comes out of your boot. There will be a little hole in the side where this wire is gonna go back in, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. So first thing you've gotta do is actually get the wire out. Now he destroyed his boot. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the side there. So I'm actually gonna go through here, but you're gonna wanna, you can either pull it out this way or this way. A lot of times it's easier to go in through the big hole and pull it out, but we're going to take this little coil out that goes on your spark plug now. See, that's what actually attaches to your plug. So first thing we're going to do is put it back into the coil wire. And on this one, since I don't have a hole, I'm going to have to make a hole, but you'll go about as far back as this long piece is into the coil wire to where when it's on the spark plug, it's, sit it's sitting like this. So I'm going to want to make a hole in the very center of the wire with this pokey part right here and push it in really tough and then get your uh, pliers and you want to make it go all the way through the center of the wire all right once you get it stuck in there so far you can keep it straight and grab your needle nose and push it all the way through the center of this wire to where it's just like that now I had to cut off the bad part of the boot here because he had already destroyed it, but your boot might be a little longer, but to make it easier, I'm going to grab some grease and I'm going to put a little bit of grease right here on this little wire. I'm going to stick my needle nose pliers inside my plug boot and I'm going to stretch it out. Don't stretch too much where you break it, but just get it loose. Once you got it loose and you've got your grease on there, you're going to put your boot back on the end, push it all the way through, and if it had that covered there, you wouldn't be able to see that, but we had to cut it off, but make sure it's sitting correctly inside the boot and you're good to go. It's super simple. It's a $5 fix at my shop, but if you go to whittling away on your coil, you're going to have to replace it. And uh, unfortunately that turns into a $120 fix. So 
thanks again for tuning back in Judge Mechanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, definitely money, and frustration in the future. Do not miss the next video that we're putting out. For uh, We're picking winners for the 20,000 subscriber giveaway. I've got lots of winners already picked out, and we're going to be announcing those names, so don't miss it. I'm going to give back a little bit to you since y'all have given me so much. The comments were hilarious. Thank you. So uh, if you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Thanks, and have a great day.